Hey pre-calc students, uh, this is going to be another example on solving trigonometric equations. Uh, and this one's going to involve trigonometric factoring um, of quadratics, which works the same way as normal factoring quadratics goes. And we have done factoring problems like this in class. Uh, we just haven't gone the step further to solve the actual um, equation once we factored it, um, since we've just been working with expressions lately. So here we go. This is going to be on uh, problem number four from that worksheet uh, that I just posted in Google Classroom today. So uh, and this one wants you to solve for all possible values in radians instead of degrees. So the last one that we did, we solved for degrees. This one we're going to solve for radians. Um, so here we go. Two sine squared x minus three sine x. Um, plus one equals zero. Okay, so the hint for this one is actually to use factoring of quadratics, um, which is what we're going to do. And if you remember from class, what we did instead of using sine in the equation when we're factoring it, we substituted a different variable for sine to make it look a little bit more like something that we're used to factoring. So I'm going to make sine of x u. So then 2 sine of x would be u squared. Or sorry, not 2 sine of x. Uh, sine squared of x would be u squared. So we get 2u squared minus 3u plus 1 equals 0. So we'll put the signs back in when we get closer to the end uh, and more ready to solve. OK, so then we're going to factor this just like we would factor any quadratic with a leading coefficient that's not 1. Um, I'm going to take 2 times 1, we get 2, and then I'm looking for things that multiply to get 2 and add to get negative 3. So in this case, we should get negative 2 and negative 1. So now I'm going to rewrite this. We have 2u squared minus 2u minus 1u plus 1 equals 0. Then I'm going to split down the middle. I'm going to factor out. The greatest common factor here and the greatest common factor here. In this case, it's 2u, and we're left with u minus 1. And then I'm going to factor out a negative 1 here, so minus 1 times u minus 1. Factor out a negative 1 because even though there's not really a GCF here, I wanted this to match, the u minus 1s to match here. Okay. So then I'm going to factor out that u minus 1 that they both have. So we get u minus 1 times 2u minus 1 equals 0. OK, so now we're all factored. And now I need to go back and go, OK, I've substituted u instead of sine. So now I'm going to substitute sine back in and get sine minus 1 and 2 sine minus 1 equals 0. And so then just like we would if I was going to start here and solve for u and figure out what makes uh, this 0, I'm going to do what, the same thing that I would do there here. So you know, here I would set u minus 1 equal to 0 and 2u minus 1 equal to 0. Well, I'm going to set sine of x minus 1 equal to 0 and 2 sine of x minus 1 equal to 0. So we're going to go sine of x minus 1 equals 0, and 2 sine of x minus 1 equals 0. OK, so now we're going to solve both of these. So adding 1 to both sides, we get sine of x equals 1. And if you think about the unit circle, there's only one place on the unit circle where sine of x is positive 1, and that is at pi over 2, since we're talking radians this time. So x equals pi over 2. And since we want all values, that means we need to stick on that plus or minus 2 pi n. So that means if I've got my unit circle here, this is where we've got pi over 2 is the angle. Uh, every time I go around the circle, that's 2 pi. And I end up back up here, where sine of that uh, angle is 1. So that's why we have to add the 2 pi n. So that's one of our answers. 
This is what would make sine of x minus 1 equal to 0, which would in turn make the equation 0. Now I want to do the same thing for this one. So I'm going to add 1 to both sides. We get 2 sine of x equals 1. Divide by 2, we get sine is 1 half. Okay. So now we're thinking of places where sine is 1 half. So if we're thinking unit circle, uh, 30 degrees or pi over 6 is where sine is 1 half. And then also again, right over here at 5 pi over 6 is another place where x is 1 half. So x equals pi over 6. X also equals 5 pi over 6. And then since we want all values, we have to tack on our plus 2 pi n. And these would be our other two answers of things that would make this equation equal to 0, which would in turn make this equal to 0. Okay, so these three uh, should all be part of our answer here. Okay, so hopefully this was helpful. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to email me, um, comment below, or come to office hours at some point. See you guys later.